live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Happening now in Baltimore, Maryland, the Francis Scott Key Bridge has collapsed into the Patapsco River. Let's go live to ABC for an update. News headquarters in New York. I'm Rebecca Jarvis and we are interrupting our programming to bring you breaking news. A major bridge has collapsed in Baltimore, Maryland. You see it there. Fire officials say people have fallen into the water. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was hit by a container ship overnight. Images show the aftermath of the collapse. Other images being shared online show the massive steel structure and multiple vehicles falling into the Patapsco River. Fire officials say on the vehicles, the water is a big, uh, in the water is a large tractor trailer. And joining us on the phone is ABC's Sam Sweeney. And Sam, what do you know right now? Rebecca, we know that this happened about 1.30 this morning when that, that boat, for some unknown reason, collided with one of the columns on that bridge. Now, we see in the live stream lights flicker on the boat as it approaches. In the moments before impact, there are a number of cars and trucks going over. But just seconds before that impact, it appears that the traffic stopped. Now, we know that there were workers on that bridge, and Baltimore County fire officials tell us that they believe at least seven people were thrown into the water when that bridge uh, collapsed, and they are searching for them. They are using night vision, helicopters, divers are in the water. Keep in mind, it is dark out. The water is roughly 47 degrees, which means hypothermia can set in in about an hour or so. So time is of the essence here, but we are not expecting daylight for at least another hour. This is the 695 bridge that uh, goes over the Baltimore Harbor. There is a lot of boat traffic here. More than 11 million cars use this bridge every single year. It is also the designated hazmat bridge. There's a number of tunnels that go underneath the Baltimore Harbor, but the hazmat trucks have to use this bridge. So this is a crucial uh, bridge in connectivity in this area. It was built in 1977. It's roughly two miles long, and most of the bridge collapsed. Part of the bridge also collapsed on top of that shipping container that's more than 900 feet long. Thousands of containers are on that ship. It was pulling out of the port. It was headed to, we believe, Colombo, Sri Lanka, according to um, marine traffic shipping uh, app apps. Uh, but we, we don't know exactly what caused the ship to hit this bridge. Thank you, Sam. We appreciate that. And we know this bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, was also named after the author of the Star Spangled Banner. I'm here with Gio Benitez, who is our transportation correspondent. And this happened around 1.35 a.m. this morning. The FBI, we know, is on the scene, according to Pierre Thomas. Can you tell us what you think might have happened here based on what you're seeing in these images? Well, well, Sam was talking about those flickering lights on the ship. And when you look at this video right before impact, it seems like all the lights just completely shut off. So obviously they're gonna be looking very closely at whether there was some sort of power failure, whether this ship lost control. We don't know a lot right now. We don't have that confirmed, of course. But when you see that in the video where this ship just appears to lose power, that's gonna be a central part uh, to this investigation. You said 1.30 a.m. Thank goodness, thank goodness that this was at 1.30 in the morning because had it happened during the day, we're talking about a major, major casualty event. At this point, we still don't know how many people are in the water right now because we do have reports of people in the water. Uh, but had this happened during the day, we're talking about a bridge that in 2023 carried more than 12 million cars. So this is a very, very popular uh, bridge. This is a very, very popular waterway as well. This actually is a waterway that allows ships with hazardous materials to go by. That's how huge this waterway is and how important it is to the Baltimore area. And, and our Pierre Thomas is also reporting with the FBI on the scene. There are no indications at this point of terror, um, but the FBI is going to be doing background checks on everybody aboard that ship. The ship is a cargo ship. It is a Singaporean cargo ship. Tell us anything that you could tell us about what a ship like that, the capacity a ship like that would have. Well, we're, we're talking about an absolutely massive ship at, at this point. And one of the things they're going to be looking at, if there was a power failure, how is this ship controlled? And, and there's so much we just don't know at this point about that ship. Uh, but we're talking about something that has so much mass. When you look at the video, it's it, it almost appears like it's slowly approaching. But mm -hmm. that tells you how big it is, because when it made impact with that that structural part of the bridge, 
that's what caused this collapse. So we're talking about something that's major. Um, we're looking also at the history of the bridge itself. I, I looked at the poor bridges list. It does not appear to be on that list in Maryland, so that's good news. But this was obviously undergoing repair because we were talking about those construction workers, and those construction workers were there overnight uh, since the beginning of the year for a construction project that was lasting all the way through the summer or fall of 2025. So there were major repairs that were, that were underway. And, and this is a current picture of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after being hit by a cargo ship around 1.35 a.m. Eastern Time. The FBI is on the scene there conducting investigations. Gio Benitez, thank you so much for joining us. Sam Sweeney, thank you as well. And we're going to continue to follow this story. But right now we head back to our regular programming. Our team coverage begins at 7 a.m. on Good Morning America, and we will see you then. All right, back here in San Antonio. That is our big story today, one of them, and we'll continue to track it. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It's March 26th. Thanks for joining us and a little cooler start to your day. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, light jacket's not a bad idea. It didn't really get quite as cool as what we could have gotten. We're at uh, 59 degrees, but we do have some clouds. This little layer of clouds decided to, to slide in on top of us like a blanket. Look at the bottom number, though, dew point at 41. Remember yesterday at this time, those numbers were well up into the mid-60s. So, yeah, much drier air out there. We are going to dip down a couple of more notches this morning and get back up then to 70. So we will stay a handful of degrees below normal across the, the area. And as far as the aquifer did drop down two tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading allergens oak which did come back up. Now it's, it's lower than what it was a couple of days ago, but still 3,020 on the high side. Take a look at the uh, water vapor imagery right now, and you can see that there are some of those a uh, little bit of moisture that came on in here. Now these aren't necessarily showing clouds, just moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, but you know, we had that really dry air, this uh, darker shade of gray that moved on in here that was in here yesterday, and then that, that little layer of clouds that decided to uh, slide on in, and this is that moisture right there. Like I said, those are going to continue to break up. We're going to have a lot of sunshine around here today. 59 in town, 40s in the hill country, definitely cooler. And again, as the clouds break a little bit this morning, we will dip down and some of this cooler air is going to be uh, kind of scooching on in here. And yeah, bone dry air. It's going to be really pleasant today. Very pleasant the next couple of days. 66 at noon, 73, like I said, for a high temperature. Yes, it will start to change. We're going to have a look ahead to Easter weekend. Overall, nice, but uh, well, we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, welcome back, sir. Long, uh, busy on Sunday. What's going on? Yeah, the yeah, busy at the All Star Game. Had a great time out there with all the kids, and congratulations to everyone who participated in that event. As we take a quick look here at traffic, take a look here. 35 at Topper Wine, southbound traffic here at 35, and this is going to be the big story for the next couple of hours or so, especially for our drivers on the northeast side. The northeast expansion here, Topper Wine to Judson, they're going to have at least three main lanes blocked through 7 a.m. That's anticipated. Hopefully they could get that cleared out beforehand. Uh, but again, they are doing some bridge beam settings in this area from Topper Wine specifically to Judson Road. That's going to be three main lanes that are going to be closed. We did see at least one main lane getting through there, but of course traffic is expected to build up as we get through the morning. Again, construction out here expected to last through 7 a.m. at least. Hopefully they can get that cleared out a little bit sooner. That's something we will continue to monitor. As we go to the far west side, this is a crash we've been following over the past a couple of hours or so loop 1604 this is going to be at the southbound turnaround at Shanefield Road and I believe we have a live shot of this right now from our photographer at the scene Santiago Esparza who uh, just arrived a couple of minutes ago and we're getting a live look here so well, what I was told from Transguide was that this was on the turnaround there on the southbound lanes and we do see at least one vehicle there off to your left hand side uh, that is significantly damaged uh, we do know that there was at least one vehicle here there were multiple fire units that were called out to the scene initially this was called out out as a as an extraction so we do see that there is heavy heavy damage there from that vehicle we'll continue to try and get more information out there but again 1604 Shanefield Road had a pretty big accident again under the highway but still uh, expected to cause a little bit of delays as crews continue and you see uh, SAPD and uh, other officials out there at the scene trying to get this cleared up but uh, yeah we'll get more information on that here in just a bit in terms of traffic on 1604 you can see that traffic is moving along pretty smoothly in both directions there rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Clearing out traffic, uh, construction, also an I-10 at 37, but uh, everything else looking okay, guys, for the most part. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys.
Thank you very much, RJ. On top of everything else that's happening this morning on a busy news morning, we have a power outage affecting over 2,000 customers. You're looking live right now at the CPS Energy outage map showing uh, a significant outage affecting just over 2,500 customers in the Timber Ridge neighborhood. That is along Culebra just outside 410 and inside this outage area is Carlos Kuhn Elementary School. Haven't heard how it's affecting the school. It could affect the school this morning. Hopefully this outage will be fixed sooner than later. On to other news, the Valley School District expanding its efforts to help teachers from Robb Elementary. The school board unanimously approved its new mental health days plan last night. Staff affected by the Robb Elementary shooting can now apply for additional mental health days. The district says it's already giving teachers two mental health days each year, but those seeking an additional day must meet certain qualifications. That includes using the two mental health days already provided, along with proof of a scheduled appointment with a counselor or medical provider. They must also have been employed at Robb Elementary at the time of the shooting or have an immediate family member impacted by the tragedy. Then staff will have to apply for the extra mental health day. Meanwhile, board members also heard a construction update on the school that will replace Robb Elementary. Construction started last month and the district says work is on schedule. UCISD expects construction to wrap up in the 2025-2026 school year. Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation is still working to raise about $20 million for construction. And it has been two years and three months since she was last seen on a playground and the search for Lena Kill has not ended. This is what she could look like today. This is an image from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Now, Lena would be six years old today. You may remember that she disappeared in December of 2021 when she was just three years old. She was last seen on the playground of her apartment complex off of Fredericksburg Road. Now, since then, her family has been grieving and is desperate for answers. If you know anything that could lead to Lena, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. That number is on your screen, 210-224-7867. Police are also searching for this man. This is 64-year-old Benjamin Vargas Regalado, and he goes by the name Ben. He's been missing since March 17th, and police say he has a medical condition. He's about 5'9 and has brown eyes. If you have any information, call San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. Right now we're at 512 and 56 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. Starting a little cooler this morning, not as humid as yesterday, but looking forward to some sunshine again. We're going to be checking in with Mike very soon. We are your Eclipse Authority. Tomorrow, our KSAT weather team is helping you get ready for the solar eclipse. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery will be hosting an eclipse glasses giveaway at Yanaguana Garden at Hemisphere. Line starts at 4 p.m. and then the glasses will be handed out at 6.30. You can find more information on the giveaway at KSAT.com. And the time now is 5.16 and about 60 degrees this morning. We'll be right back. always the couch does he need to go to puppy school get his little puppy diploma how much have i been spending on this little guy when your questions about life turn into questions about money there's erica the virtual financial assistant to help you spend save and plan smarter only from bank of america what would you like the power to do Jordan's sore nose let out a fiery sneeze, so Dad grabbed Puffs Plus Lotion to soothe her with ease. Puffs Plus Lotion is gentle on sensitive skin and locks in moisture to provide soothing relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. In 10 years, Lisa Schneider will have an amazing second act. Thanks to career reskilling courses from AARP to help make sure her income lives as long as she does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. All right, welcome back. It is 519 right now, and it is already a very busy start to the roadways as we take you outside right now, looking at 35 southbound at Salado Creek. So what we have here is a driver that spun out of control is now facing the opposite direction here. So this is a 35 southbound lanes coming in from the Ben Zingelman area in this uh, Salado Creek right before you're going to hit Frostbank Center. So this driver spun out facing the other direction, but you do see that San Antonio police have went ahead and shut down that entrance ramp into 35 at Salado Creek in this area as we try and get this 
this vehicle cleared out. Looks like this driver uh, was okay for the most part, but again, uh, something that might cause some traffic delays in this area. As we take a look at our map, so traffic still getting through here, but again, the entrance ramp right there, 35 southbound at Salado Creek, a car facing in the opposite direction went ahead and spun out. That driver did, so something that we will continue to monitor. Let's take you to the far west side now because we're still having this uh, latest situation here with this crash that's, that was reported a little while ago, 1604 southbound at uh, Shanefield Road, and this is a shot here from our photographer on the scene, Santiago Esparza. We have at least one vehicle involved. We were told that uh, this did involve a person that may have been stuck and inside the vehicle after this crash. Um, now, we do have emergency officials that are still on the scene right now as we take a live look at what is going on there. This was on the turnaround lane under 1604, so not causing any major delays right now on the highway. As we come back out to the maps here real quick, uh, come out to me. Yeah, you see that traffic is still kind of moving pretty smooth through this area. 1604, that turnaround there at Shanefield Road. We will continue to follow the latest there. And as far as construction, biggest thing we're seeing right now, uh, northeast side, Topper Wine to Judson Road. We have three main lanes blocked coming in. In southbound 35 topper wine to Judson for some bridge beam settings. All right, Mike, very busy out there. How are things looking in the weather department? Pretty tranquil compared to all of that. Thank you very much, RJ. Great picture there. Oh, look at the bumblebee hard at work. Love that one. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. You really can't see it too well in this shot uh, over there, 10 and 410, but we do have some clouds that moved on in here, and that kept us, like I said, from getting as cool as where we were, um, where we could be right now. Humidity, dew point temperatures have dropped down significantly, so it's much more pleasant when you step outside this morning. Actually, a little on the cool side, Carrizo Springs has dropped down 36 degrees. The dew point from this time yesterday, 26 here in town and 23 there in Gonzales. So much drier air has moved on in here. So we will have some of these clouds around. They'll begin to break up in the next uh, couple of hours, and that's going to allow temperatures to dip down just a little bit right as right before sunrise, and then we warm up pretty quickly throughout the day. We are going to make it up to 66 at noon, and we'll top off in the low 70s later on today, which is just a few degrees below normal. I don't think any complaints, though. It's going to be really pleasant with the dry air out there, and uh, that's going to be the situation for the next couple of days. Here's the computer model for tomorrow, and there is a small chance, a little disturbance that wants to kind of just scooch on through here, maybe a couple little showers in the morning hours tomorrow. Chances are, are almost minute at best, but just a, kind of a mention of that. Then we'll have more sunshine throughout the day and still very, very comfortable as far as the humidity is concerned with these dew points remaining low all the way pretty much through Thursday. Then the humidity starts to come back in here for Good Friday and then especially going on into the weekend, Saturday and Easter Sunday. We're up into the low to mid 60s. So yeah, you're going to notice the humidity as you step outside on Easter. We are going to have a few more clouds hanging around here as well. Here's what's going on. We've got this big low up here in the uh, Central Plains states, and that's been just uh, pulling down this great air. We've got this northwesterly flow aloft in the atmosphere. This trough is sort of sitting on top of us, and so this is the uh, why temperatures are so pleasant out there, and that's going to be the situation, like I said, for the next few days. Then the humidity starts to return, and we start to get into more of a southwesterly flow that's going to pull in more clouds around here, especially Saturday and then Sunday, and that's uh, we open up the door for the humidity as well down here at the surface, so that's why we are going to start to see more humidity through the weekend and then going into the first part of next week. Then up the front after that, more on that in a second. 73 today, 75 tomorrow. Another cool morning. Jackets in the morning. Don't need them in the afternoon. Maybe that morning shower tomorrow. Just very, very spotty at best. Great on Thursday as well. On Good Friday, we get up to 80. Still pleasant, but you'll notice a bit more humidity. Yes, it is going to be humid for Saturday as well as Easter Sunday and then going into Monday, but a front moves through for the middle part of next week to kind of get rid of that uh, humidity. A lot more after this. Stick around. Winning that ticket, Rose, was the best thing that ever happened to me. It brought me to you. And I'm thankful for that, Rose. The piece of balsa wood that was big enough to save Rose, but not Jack, in Titanic has sold at auction for more than $718,000. It was the highest bid on any item at Heritage Auctions Treasures from Planet Hollywood event, topping an Indiana Jones bullwhip and the axe from The Shining. While it's usually referred to as a door, the auction noted it was actually part of the door frame from the ship's first class lounge. In the 2000s, there wasn't a band on the planet that got more radio 
airplay the Nickelback. How You Remind Me has been considered one of America's most played songs ever. All of that exposure triggered a reaction. Why does everybody hate Nickelback? Nickelback, Nickel Hack, Nickel Bomb, Nickel Creed. Nobody picks up a guitar to be in the most hated band in the world. Hate to Love, Nickelback looks at the topsy-turvy legacy of the iconic and widely derided rock group. The documentary, featuring in-depth interviews with the band, traces the quartet from their small town in Alberta, Canada, to worldwide fame and infamy. Hate to Love, Nickelback is in theaters Wednesday and Saturday only. Info and tickets at nickelbackfilm.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Happening now in Baltimore, Maryland, the Francis Scott Key Bridge has collapsed into the Patapsco River. Right now, they are searching for several people who were on the bridge at the time. Now, it happened around 12.30 a.m. our time after the bridge was struck by a large ship. Video shows the ship approaching the bridge and crashing directly into one of the support columns. Now, the bridge serves as the outermost crossing of the Baltimore Harbor. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi with the latest. Breaking news this morning from Baltimore, Maryland, where police say there's been a partial bridge collapse. The scene is the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which has apparently been hit by a container ship. The middle section of the bridge collapsed into the water, and there are unknown amounts of people and or vehicles in the water. Video being shared online overnight shows the massive steel structure and multiple vehicles falling into the Patapsco River. Fire officials say one vehicle is as big as a tractor trailer. Multiple people also fell into the water. We're told overnight work was being done on the bridge. Maryland authorities confirm all lanes of traffic are closed in both directions. The bridge opened in 1977 and carries Interstate 695 over the river, which is a busy shipping area. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Baltimore. Oh, hi, we're back. Hi, good morning. And Mike is Mike. trying to do us a favor and just some <laughs> mo you, monitors Mike. here in the uh, studio. Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Tuesday. It is the 26th of, yes. of um, March. 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 Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, we're still in March, hanging we're, on there to spring. <laughs> we're juggling a lot of, a lot of balls yeah, this morning. Yeah, End of the month already, and a lot of people are still shaking their heads going, really, Easter already? Mm -hmm. I know. That, that came up pretty quick, and especially with the cold morning this morning. Does yep, it, feel like it, it is. It is coolish out there this morning. Not cold. I mean, I'll grab a jacket. I mean, especially in the hill country. We do have a few clouds kind of hanging around here, so that has sort of helped keep temperatures from getting as cool as what they could have gotten. We'll still drop down a couple of more notches here and there. Right now, we are holding at 59. Dew point is down to 41 degrees. Yesterday at this time, it was right around mid 60s. So we have dried out that much uh, with those northerly winds that came on in here. And of course, it was a little bit on the breezy side yesterday. Now, mid to 40s in parts of the hill country, 47s, Kerrville Comfort. Yeah, I mean, definitely jacket weather to step outside. And then you won't need it by later on today. It's going to be a really, really pleasant day. Uh, dew points all around the area remain very low. And this is going to be the case for the next couple of days. So again, coolish jacket mornings, nice afternoons. But if you're outside, yeah, OK. It did come down from the reading over the weekend, which was what, almost 7,000. So uh, but still on the high side. And we're not quite done, obviously, with the oak season as of yet. We're just getting into the, the peak of it, really. Morning clouds and then lots of sunshine out there. Low 70s today, a really, really nice day. Actually, a little bit below normal later on this afternoon by just a couple of degrees. Now, the next couple of days, very, very pleasant. Like I said, there is a chance for a shower tomorrow in the morning hours. Just one or two of them here. Or there, not really a big deal, just a, a mention of it. Then we go into the weekend, and we're going to start to see the humidity make its return or begin its return on Friday, and it will start to climb in there. So you're going to notice the humidity Saturday, and yes, especially on Easter Sunday. We are going to have a few more clouds on Easter Sunday as well. And the next week is going to be starting off on the, we'll call it the hot side, 80s and humid, but we have another front moving on through here, which is going to trim the humidity and uh, give us a break from the temperatures by the middle of next week. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, still got some big problems out there? Yeah, Mike's been very busy, but before we start there, just want to let people know on the west side that that power outage 
that was in the at the Loof 410 and Culebra area. That appears to be resolved according to uh, what we're seeing right now from CPS Energy. So that's something we've been following over the past half hour. So it appears to be resolved for the moment right now at 410 Culebra Road. So that's good news out there for those folks. Uh, not great out right now on the east side because we do have this crash still being reported in this area. 35 southbound at Salado Creek. So we have a car that spun out of control. And all right, so we got some good news. Looks like we're getting that vehicle out of the way here. So this was blocking the entrance ramp in this area on 35 southbound at Salado Creek. So take a quick look at our maps. Traffic is moving through that area for the most part. So it looks like we are getting that cleared out in that area right by the Frost Bank Center Drive. All right, we have this other crash that we're still looking at here. 1604 southbound. This is the turnaround at Shanefield Road. Our photojournalist Santiago Esparza still out there giving us a live shot as we see emergency officials have been out there now for about an hour and a half. So this was reported about four o'clock this morning. This was on the turnaround lanes, loop 1604 southbound. So not causing any major issues on 1604 in the main lanes, but you do see that there's a pretty serious accident out there. It was initially reported as a person that may have been, uh, had to be taken out of this vehicle because of the, uh, because of that collision. And we do know there was at least one vehicle involved there and uh, multiple units were called out to the scene earlier, but uh, it looks like uh, they are starting to maybe kind of clear things out and clean this area up here in a little bit, maybe get that vehicle out here in just uh, in just a little while. But we will continue to follow the very latest there. As we come back out to our maps real quick, uh, the other big thing I want to let you know about is that we have major construction going on right now. Southbound lanes, thir uh, 35 from Topper Wine all the way to Judson Road. So we're expecting three main lanes to stay closed in this area through 7 a.m. So again, southbound 35 construction there, Topper Wine to Judson, something to keep in mind as you head out on the far northeast side. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Oh, we're actually going to go show you now risks real quick here. We have a uh, story about these TxDOT, these new signs that we're looking at here. All right, so you may have noticed these out in the highways right now. So these are some brand new signs that TxDOT uh, has up right now to kind of notify people of uh, the drive times and sort of some other information that they definitely need to know as they head out. So the one we're looking at here is on 90 at Nogalito Street. And uh, you see that they're upgrading these signs to be a little bit more modern, a little bit more of the digital signs that we've seen uh, in parts of the other parts of the state. Plus, I know that uh, David Sears mentioned to me a while back that they've added a couple of these up in uh, 281 in the Bolverde area as well. So again, we'll get more information on these signs. Again, a lot more people noticing these as they make their way out across the city. All right, now we'll go to Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. Well, a San Antonio family hopes their story will encourage others to give the gift of life. Without one family's sacrifice, 16-year-old Zach Baza would not be alive. His mom tells our Daniela Ibada she thinks about her son's organ donor every single day. Zach Baza is a pretty laid-back 16-year-old. I like to hang out with friends. Okay. And read books. Oh my gosh. His mom, Carmelita, can't believe he's made it Take this on. far. I'm so proud of him. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of where we are. Soon after Zach was born, doctors realized his liver was failing. At six months old, he needed a triple organ transplant, a new liver, small bowel, and pancreas. Doctors weren't sure if he'd live long enough to get them and prepared Carmelita for the worst. I didn't even know what to do. I was like, how do you how do you make funeral arrangements for a baby? I mean, I just, it, it just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. In April of 2008, the family of a four-year-old who lost their life realized their child could live on in another. It, it would take me a while to find the words uh, other than thank you, and that's just so, just so incomplete, so inadequate, you know. A scar on Zach's stomach serves as a reminder of what he's overcome. I used to say that um, I think uh, I got cut with like a samurai sword <laughs> by an actual samurai. He doesn't remember what the start of his life was like, but Zach knows how he plans to live the rest of it. It's a blessing, basically. And it's it sounds unreal, but um, it's just um, that I'm grateful to have what I have. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And happening tomorrow, our Daniela Ibada is hosting a town hall about organ donation. So you will be able to hear from experts about some of the challenges and misconceptions about becoming a donor. So we're going to have all that information on our website at KSET.com. 
And today is Diabetes Alert Day. University Health will hold a resource fair uh, focused on the disease. Plus, you can learn more about A1C and talk with medical experts. The Texas Diabetes Institute is hosting the event, and you're encouraged to register beforehand. We have a link to do that on ksat.com in the ksat community section. Time now is 539 and about 59 degrees for now. Are you feeling lucky? After the break, we're talking about the lottery and what you need to know about the upcoming drawings. Let's look out there with a live cam this morning. A little cooler. I wouldn't call it cold, but you know, you may want to grab a hoodie or a light jacket this morning. Uh, things will change this afternoon and we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your work week. Welcome back. It's 543. So no one won the Powerball jackpot last night. And in case you missed it, here are those numbers. Uh, also, the Powerball that, numbers. That's all the other numbers? Yeah, I was going to say, that. let's go to maybe the next page. We usually have it after the Texas two-step. Well, maybe we'll pull those up. Oh, there you go. So there are the numbers. 7, 11, 19, 53, 68, Powerball 23, Power Play 2. Those were the numbers. There was no grand prize winner in the Powerball last night, so according to the lottery's website, two players, one in New York and one in Florida, won a million dollars each. We spoke to people here who were hoping to get lucky with Lotto. If you were to win, what would you do? Uh, well, I would do a couple things. I would probably want to uh, set up like a one-stop shop for uh, men that uh, would be able to get information and learn how to invest, uh, be able to get like uh, some type of uh, blue-collar jobs. Um, if they're a felon, be able to find uh, resources to where they can also get, you know, that second chance employments and so forth. All right, so the next Powerball drawing is tomorrow night, and it's now estimated to be $865 million. If the grand prize is won, it would be the fifth largest in the game's history. Not to make, even make mention of the fact that tonight's Mega Millions is $1.1 billion. So we have options. We have you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, a tiny chance. Right now it is 544, 59 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide. Looking over at I-35 at Topper Wine, there's something going on there. We're going to check in with RJ, but on your screen, 281 at Loop 410 and 410 at Blanco Road look pretty good right now. We're going to be checking in very soon. Welcome back on your Tuesday morning. It was a night of premieres at the movies, and what made it unique was all of the work was created by local high schoolers. That's right. The 8th Annual Bear Fest is happening next week, but before the films, photos, music, and graphic designs are displayed to the public area, high schoolers and nonprofits got to see the work months in the making. Photojournalist. We want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Tickets? Perfect. What school are you in? Reagan. Reagan High School, I went there. All the schools that have participated in Bear Fest and Film for Nonprofits are here at Santiago's Palladium to see the screening of all the projects we have made. We're looking at all of the films, all of the portfolios and everything that all of the different teams submitted. Bear Fest was a really unique idea. There's nothing like it. And it is a way to pair our high schools with our nonprofits in the community. What do we got? What schools have we got here? So hi, we're from Reagan High School, and the nonprofit that we filmed is Alamo City Pitbull. So they get to go and work with these nonprofits. They're learning community service. They're learning how to project manage. They're work, learning uh, multimedia skills in, in the process, and then they're actually putting a project together that they can use in their portfolio. <laughs> We started out by getting matched with the organization and then we went to a couple events, talked with the people, figured out what their vision for this was and then we filmed it, we edited it. We had worked on this for so long and we had really wanted to make this impact and it felt really nice to see it on the big screen, like where you usually see all these big movies, like we got to see our project and then people clapping for it, it felt really nice. That was kind of surreal, it was, it was really cool seeing something I had worked on just on a little uh, computer screen on the exact same screen I saw Dune on a week ago. And our thanks to William Caldera and Andrew Wilson for putting that together. If you want to see all of the team's hard work, you can attend the free award ceremony over at the Tobin Center on April 1st. Just go to TobinCenter.org to get a ticket. 
And the time now is 5.50. Let's check back with RJ about the situation at I-35 at Topper Line. Guys, this is the thing that we've been following throughout the morning. Just want to get the word out as much as possible that if you are headed out to the northeast side, we're seeing our more than average construction taking place here right there at Topper Wine all the way to Judson. So these construction crews are working on some bridge beam settings right there from Topper Wine to Judson Road as we take a look at our traffic maps right now. And you do see 35 southbound. There's going to be construction that is expected to last through 7 a.m. So even through our 6 o'clock hour, if you're headed out the door right now in the northeast side, keep this in mind that this is going to be longer than average sort of construction that we're seeing here. Three main lanes closed and traffic now backed up all the way to Agora Parkway. A couple other things popping up across the city, so stay with me as, as we kind of zigzag uh, here and there. Loop 410 eastbound at Zarzamora Road, not causing any major delays right there by the Palo Alto College area and uh, the Highway 16 area, but something to keep in mind. And we also have a stall being reported. Loop 16 4 northbound right now at Wiseman Boulevard. This one just popped up. This is around the SeaWorld area. Of course, Brennan High School is also in this area as well, but do expect uh, traffic to build up a little bit more in that area as well. Plus, we still have our live shots out there at 1604 Shanefield Road, a, bit, a little bit north of that uh, stalled vehicle that we're seeing right there on Wiseman and 1604. Santiago Arispatas, our photojournalist, still out there. Um, at least one vehicle involved in this crash. It was reported around 4 o'clock this morning at the turnaround lanes for Loop 410 southbound, so not causing any major issues there on the main lanes of 1604 but again based on our live shot here we still have a lot of emergency crews out there there were at least uh, I want to say a half a dozen fire units uh, that responded to this vehicle crash earlier and we are still continuing to get more details on this guys thank you RJ real quick folks we know it's a busy news morning we want to pass along uh, Baltimore's fire chief says two people have now been rescued after the collapse of the key bridge there in Baltimore one seriously injured but apparently rescues in progress and we're gonna have much more on the bridge collapse coming up in our next hour yes yeah. Just a reminder that happened at 1230 our time early this morning. That's right, in Baltimore. All right, switching gears, take a look at this uh, picture. And, uh, and Steph and I both agree, it was like, those are, yeah, those are roses. Now, they're beautiful. Yeah. I love the kind of the kind of peachy, kind of reddish look to them. Boy, that's pretty. Thank you very much for that shot. I uh, really love that one. All right, we do have some clouds hanging. Well, this camera is frozen out there at uh, 10 at 410, but uh, we do have a few clouds that decided to slide in here overnight. All right, looking ahead to Easter weekend, speaking of clouds, we are going to have a lot of sunshine today, the next few days, but a couple more clouds are going to move in here, and especially on Sunday, and we are going to start to see the humidity start to kind of creep back on in here. Very low humidity right now, and that'll be the case for the next couple of days, but yeah, time them. It couldn't, uh, well, it's still going to be a nice day, but it will be a bit on the humid side, especially for some of those early morning Easter services. We are going to see more sunshine today. Temperatures will drop down a few more degrees as we go on. We're at 59 right now here in town, thanks to that cloud cover kind of making like a little bit of a blanket that held some of the heat in overnight. We'll be up to 66 at noon, and then we're going to be topping off today at 73 degrees. As far as What's going to be happening tomorrow? There is a little bit of a disturbance that wants to slide on through here, so we can't rule out a couple of stray showers in the morning hours, just kind of scooching past here and then sliding off to the east. So it's not going to be a big deal, but just one or two of them out there. That'll be the extent of it. We've got this nice big northwesterly flow. This is that front that moved on through here yesterday. That low helped to pull it through. That's why we got such beautiful weather hanging around here for the next couple of days. And we'll have plenty of sunshine jackets in the morning. Gorgeous in the afternoon. Get into the mid to upper 70s as we go into tomorrow as well as Thursday. Then we start to see things change. We get more of a southwesterly flow with that next low digging out there. So that pulls in the moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. We start to see more and more clouds as expected around here. And like I said, it is going to be more humid on the weekend as well as going into Monday. Then there is a surface front that's going to move on through here by the middle part of the week. It's going to be interesting to see if that low would hang out there for a while. Hopefully bring some rain by next week, but nothing as of right now. Today, 73, 75. Tomorrow, closer to normal, up into the upper 70s. On Thursday, cool mornings. That chance for a stray shower or two tomorrow. And then on Good Friday, we'll be up to 80. Humidity starts to work its way back in here. So yeah, it's going to be a bit on the humid side once we get into Easter Sunday. More after this.
Shakira is using her music to heal herself with her first new album in seven years. The Spanish language project Las Mujeres Ya No Lloran, or Women No Longer Cry, was made in the wake of a very public breakup with her husband and tax evasion charges in Spain. She says making the album was therapy for her. I've, I've been through so much in these past two years that I had to literally pick up the pieces of myself and put them back together. And during that process, I think that music was the glue. Las Mujeres Ya No Lloran is out now. A record-breaking swim to the top of the charts for Teddy Swims. His song Lose Control is number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles Chart. It took 32 weeks for the track to climb to number one, the longest journey to the top for a male solo artist in the chart's 65-year history. It's the first number one for the 31-year-old Swims. The Golden Globes made its debut on CBS this year, and apparently the network was pleased with the results. It's locking up the award show for another five years. The Golden Globes previously ran on NBC. The reason that I breathe. And a supreme birthday for Diana Ross, the 13-time Grammy-nominated singer, is 80 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles.